A lot has been happening on social media. The conversation is always on 24-7. So let's bring you some of the social media trends this week. We're joined by Decode CEO Lorato Tsenkeng. Lorato, thank you so much for your time this evening. Do appreciate it. Now, there's been a lot happening. And before we even start to talk about some of the things that we saw on social media, which had us laughing, Let's listen to the ANC Secretary General on the on, on, on of course the developments around Andre Derrida. I'm going to write to him through our lawyers. He must prove within ten or seven days what he said. He's a lawyer, he can come, but we'll meet in court. I challenge him. I he must name those people whom he say they are corrupt and then uh, he must deal with it with them how did social media react to that so uh, good evening to you Bongi, and good evening to your, to your viewers absolutely you know we were always waiting for this kind of moment with uh, figile mbalula as the secretary general of the anc somebody who does not hold back uh, you know whenever there's an opportunity for him uh, to, to be a friend right and uh, after the interview uh, with Annika Lassen on another TV station, uh, Figi Lembalu, of course, the ANC was the first one to respond, or, or rather, uh, Minister Godan was the first one to respond, uh, saying that, uh, you know, any CEO of a parastatal ought to know not to be political uh, and, and stick to their lane. And of course, the following day, the ANC uh, did not hold, you know, hold back. Uh, Minister Mbalula even went to the point of uh, labeling uh, the Reide as uh, a right winger. Of course, social media, you, you know, went on to talk about, or at least the biggest sentiment was how, uh, in fact, they believe uh, what the Reide is saying. They actually know that the reason the ANC uh, is responding this way, it is because they know there is truth to it. Of course, it did not help that, you know, there's the scandal of the Hitachi and the Chancellor House, which remains uh, unsolved, uh, unresolved uh, at least. And therefore, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the sentiment on Twitter uh, and on social media in particular is, is, is not one where, you know, almost have a half and half like you ordinarily have. A lot more people get the sense that there is a lot of truth to what under the radar may have, been, may, may, may have said, of course, some lament why did he only raise this issue now and of course there's lots of questions i mean when uh, you you look at that particular interview that arise um you know that could be asked on both sides but it's still i mean this morning when i was checking it was still trending yes it, it was definitely trending and, and i guess what has kept it alive is that there's almost been a systematic response to it right so immediately after the minister minister uh, pravin godan responded uh, there was the ANC that responded, then there was Treasury that responded, and then uh, uh, the police also responded uh, because, you know, the, 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 there was uh, some uh, uh, police insinuations that the police in Mbumalanga uh, is also complicit in uh, not getting the, the, the cases through the criminal justice system. Uh, and again, you know, many other people uh, who keep on responding to it on an official capacity have kept the story alive. Of course, South Africans having their own bite uh, on the cherry. Of course, the, the, the biggest thing now that has been coming up has been that, uh, you know, he is likely to, and he as in under the radar, is likely to flee South Africa for, for the fear of, of his life. And uh, the sentiment on from some people on Twitter has been that uh, the likelihood is that he's going to go to a country where we don't have an extradition treaty, which therefore allows him to stay there and not come back to answer the questions that even Parliament, from a Scopa point of view, have raised. And definitely lots of questions. I mean, you think about what Scopa had to say, but there's another story, um, you know, that is making headlines right now, the grey listing of South Africa. Of course, some people saying they do not understand uh, what exactly this is. What are they saying? What is the sentiment on social media? Do they understand? Do they not? So, the, 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 of course, the, the, you know, the, the talk had, had always been, uh, or at least always been made to understand that uh, South Africa, you know, stands the risk of being put on a grey listing, uh, on a grey listing, uh, uh, you know, by, by the uh, finance task, uh, task team, which, you know, to a great extent, 
our, our financial systems in the country are known to be some of the most robust and the most cre- uh, the most credible. And uh, what it therefore does is that when we go and look at you, you know whether it's foreign direct investments and the like, it affects uh, the, the the country's ability. Of course, people on social media, they a lot of them reacted with shock. Uh, I know that there were, or at least I had observed that there were a number of uh, Twitter spaces, for instance, that were hosted with a number of economists uh, and financial experts who had been trying to explain to South Africans what grey listing is. I guess, you, you know, over time, yourselves as broadcasters and, uh, you know, through experts, you, you are likely to have the conversation so that you are able to do the ABCs. Yeah of what it is and how it should be understood. And definitely, um, you know, that is critical and we tried here on the show, but there's still quite a lot of moving parts of this, um, you know, to in order to be able to understand, because some are saying it's a political decision. So there's quite a lot that is at play here. But let's talk about, um, you know, yet another story that has been talked about all week, even to date, and that's still the budget speech. There's been mixed reaction here. Yes, the, the budget speech was always going to be the biggest talking point, uh, you know, mainly because, uh, you know, when, when you're looking at the ESCOM debt in particular, right, of course, uh, you know, with the, with the minister indicating that there would be, you know, a significant windfall that goes on to assisting with, with, the, with the debt of, of ESCOM, uh, a, a lot of people were uh, somewhat happy with that. But what was interesting in there was that it was mainly going to take care of the transmission uh, transmission and distribution, right, which does not necessarily then take care of the earlier part, which is literally, you know, on, on, on the, on the uh, maintenance part. And of course, uh, you know, a lot of people on Twitter had been raising that issue to say, what does it mean? We know that we have a, we, we have a, 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 a fleet that requires maintenance. The reason we are on stage seven, according to uh, many, uh, 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 you know, many experts uh, on energy in particular, and of course, South Africans believing that if you look at Twitter, a lot of people showing up their schedules, claiming that you know they believe that they are on, on, on stage eight. Uh, so the budget, the budget did not help in you know giving South Africans the confidence that we are on on on, on, yeah. on, the, on the right. Of course, your, your, your black sashes, for instance, they, they were complaining about, you know, the issue around the, the uh, social grant. They were expecting that there would be some more money that is given to uh, mm-hmm. people from a social perspective. Uh, of course, that conversation on Twitter around social, uh, you know, the social wage, the 350 SRD continues to be one that rages on. And it definitely will every time there's a budget speech. And now it's been added, um, you know, the issue of the basic income grant. So this is going to go on for quite some time. But very briefly, we've got about 20 seconds. Let's talk about mass country. Um, this, of course, is one... That has, you know, been trending, but of course, a lot of people still crying over the, you know, the, the passing of AKA. Sadly, 14 days ago, AKA was brutally shot in Devon, and today, 14, uh, 14 uh, track, you know, a 14 track uh, album was released uh, to to honor AKA. Uh, Spotify is uh, said to, uh, you know, they are going to be putting up a mural, uh, 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 on the digital display on the New York Times Square, which is likely going to, you know, shoot up the downloads. Uh, fans, people who love him, and those who have collaborated on on, on the on the uh, song or on the songs and the album have been giving him a lot of love, and I guess it goes on to continue his legacy. And all that we are seeing from a whole lot of people is just showing love to AKA's family, to Nadia Nakai, AKA's daughter, and everyone else you know who really loved him. I think this is a brilliant, brilliant gesture, and uh, may his name live on. And a big one for the magazine there. Thank you so much for your time, Lorato. Do appreciate it. That was D Code CEO, Lorato Thinking.